We are the largest meetup on a monthly basis of entrepreneurs in the Southeast. And give yourselves a round of congratulations because tonight we had 500 RSVPs. So you are in a pretty good crowd. I'm Allie Merritt. I am your MC, which means that I coordinate all of our fantastic presenters tonight and then give them little introductions. And in between everything else, I say thank you to our fantastic sponsors. So first of all, you can see above my head, it says live stream. It's because some really great sponsors in the back. Pull Spark. If you guys can look back there at this nice gentleman with the camera and wave to him and say, hi, Pull Spark. That was a lesson than enthusiastic. <laughs> hey, Pull Spark. Thank you. Every single month they donate their time and talents to stream this and then put the recording up later so people like me can watch ourselves and then tell us what not to do next time. All right. So tonight we have beer sponsors and we have two. First up, we have Teals with Microsoft. Give her a round of applause, guys. Hello, I'm Tracy. I'm with Teals. Teals is part of Microsoft Philanthropies. We are glad to be here and to see you all. Yeah. I hate being on camera, so you know, yeah. it's okay. Um, we are trying to find industry professionals that have a background in programming and computer science to go in and help us teach teachers how to teach computer science. So we are a volunteer-driven organization that is looking for people that can go one or two mornings a week to help a teacher co-teach computer science in a local high school. If you are interested or know anybody that's interested, I would love to talk to you and share some of our more of our information. Thank you. All right, and our second beer sponsor tonight is Dan Bershinsky. Here you go, Dan. Thank you, everybody. My name is Dan Bershinsky. I am a political candidate, and I am running to represent Buckhead in the State Assembly. It's a little bit unusual for me to be here, you might think, but I'll explain exactly why I'm here in just a second. Uh, I'm a first-time candidate. I am running because I recognize that for Georgia to have a robust economy going forward, we need a strong, energized technology sector. As a voter and as a citizen this last year, I watched as our current representatives proposed legislation that would have legalized discrimination against same-sex couples here in Georgia. It is quite likely that the mere proposal of that type of legislation harmed and risked our ability to land the Amazon expansion. I also watched as our current lieutenant governor attacked the state's largest single, the single largest employer in the state, Delta Airlines, over a decision that they made to distance themselves from the NRA after the school shooting in Florida. So understanding that the economy is fundamental to Georgia's future and success, I think that we need to have a pro-business, progressive culture here in Georgia. So that's why I decided to run. Thank you. So, I grew up here in Georgia. I went to college at West Point and served as an army officer until I was wounded in Afghanistan. That's where I got my cool robot legs. Um, actually, I didn't get the legs in Afghanistan. I didn't get them for a couple of years, but I got rid of my original set of legs in Afghanistan, I guess. Um, so technology is a big part of my life. I stand here because of technology. I was also fortunate enough to go to Stanford for an MBA a couple of years ago, so I understand technology, being here in the room, seeing these cool companies, hearing the pitches, it takes me back to Silicon Valley and Stanford, and it's awesome. I'm here to ask for your support, for your votes, if you can vote for me. And also, as you can see, I am not that nimble anymore. A big part of my campaign is getting my, my voice, my message, my face out to everybody. The way I do that is by getting out and knocking on doors every Saturday and every Sunday. I'm not that good at it, but I work my little butt off. I climb up all the steps in Buckhead, and I knock on as many doors as I can. So if you all have the time for it, in a coming weekend, come talk to me. Uh, sign up, come knock on some doors to me, with me. We're just talking to good, friendly, progressive voters, and we're working to build a better Georgia, a better economy, and you can all be a part of that. I would love to have your support. Thank you very much. All right, are we up and running? Okay, give it up for our very first presenter tonight, and I'm gonna say this, it has an exclamation mark, so I wanna say it really emphatically, so, whoa! Whoa! Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. 
Thank you, thank you. My name is Krishna, and I'm the product director for Woe. Woe is an app that tells you when someone is. Not where they are, but when they are. No, this is not a break in the space-time continuum. It is just a really crappy attempt at marketing, so stay with me. I promise we'll get through this together, okay? Woe is an app that calculates ETA, or estimated time of arrival, for yourself and for other people who are all going to the same location. And that's basically all that Woe does. But I think that's what makes it special. Other apps on the market show your location on a map. But this introduces privacy concerns, like who can see me and how long can they see me for? And in actuality, it doesn't actually solve a problem. Because unless you're stalking somebody, you really have no value in seeing someone's location on a map. You just want to know when they're going to get to wherever it is that you are. And that's where Woe comes in. We show you when someone is, not where. So let me tell you a story. Sam is going to dinner with three of his friends. Matt, John, and Chris. And Sam's already a little anxious because he's running late to the restaurant. When he gets there, he realizes that he's the first one to arrive, and he kind of anxiously texts his friends to figure out where they are. Chris replies that he's a few minutes away. John apologizes because he's running late, and he shares his location, and Matt doesn't even respond. Well, Sam feels a little bit better, but then he starts to wonder, what does a few minutes away actually mean? OK, so I can see a location, but John could be in traffic. I don't know when he's going to get here. And Matt doesn't even respond. So does that mean he's not coming anymore? Like, what the hell, dude? All of these thoughts start like swirling around in his head. And he feels like everyone at the restaurant is like looking at him. And like they all know his shame that no one is actually going to come. <laughs> and sure enough, he reaches into his pocket, grabs his phone, and starts like pretending to do something when we all know that he's just swiping on the screen from left to right. All right? I'm sorry to tell you that later on that night, Sam dies from his anxiety and uncertainty at the at the restaurant. I'm kidding. But what Sam just went through is something I think we can all identify with, that, that worry, that anxiety, just when you want to hang out with people. And we call that party panic. Party panic affects 35 million Americans every year and can lead to sadness, depression, loneliness, and even erectile dysfunction. And that's why we created Woe. Because the truth is, when you're in the middle of a party panic, you don't care where someone is. You just want to know when they are. And we give you exactly that on what we call the ETA board. Here we show you real live updates of the ETAs of everyone who's coming to your event. And we even alert you when they've arrived. Your ETA and arrival is also shared with everybody. So you guys all have the same information. And using the app is super simple. Download it, create an event, add a couple basic details, and send it out. That's it. Once. Once everyone uh, accepts their invitation, we'll automatically start sending their ETA one hour before your event. No need to send any reminders. It's super simple. We call that go time, and we alert you once it's started. So what would happen if Sam, happen if Sam had woe? He would download the app, create an event, and invite his friends. Once they accept the invitation and it's inside of one hour from the event, he'd see all of their ETA show up on the ETA board. No anxiety, no worry, no party panic then they can all have dinner and live happily ever after. So how can you get Woe? Right now, we're available in the App Store, so please download the app and give us a try. Uh, in order to be able to create events, you do have to have the iOS app, but your friends don't need it, because when you send them an invitation, they'll get a text message with either a link to download the app or a link for a mobile browser so that they can follow along and share their ETA and see the ETA board, just like if they had the app. So everyone with Android can also be a part of the fun. And uh, that's just about it. So I'd like to ask you very sincerely to take about 30 seconds of your time and go to this website, bit.ly uh, bit slash tellwo, and fill out a 30-second survey. User feedback is super important to us, and we really listen to what it is that you say. So if you have some constructive criticism, an aha moment that you got from the event, or you, even if you want to work with us, fill out a one-question survey and send it to us, and we're really looking forward to your feedback. Make sense? All right, cool. And with that, thank you very, very much. You guys have been an awesome audience. And let's take some questions. I appreciate it. I'm going to say it now. Krishna, repeat the question. Repeat the question. Sir. How do you make money? Oh, God. OK. You know, how do you make money with this? Uh, so this is, first and foremost, I'm not 100% I'm not sure yet. Uh, this is more of a passion project. But what we decided, OK, no, seriously, we've thought about it, because I knew that question was going to come up. Uh, what we would do is if we get traction and a lot of people are using it, we would start recommending places for them to have events. We'd like break it up into categories, like are you going to go to a happy hour? Are you going to have a dinner? Is it going to be a fun event? And then we would promote certain venues and locations uh, depending uh, on you know, where they're going or what they want to do. 
So that would be a you know way of passive income. Sir, in the back. That's a great question. So if I if I create an event and I send an, an invitation out to a friend and like they're stuck at like five minutes and they're not moving, uh, like can I like you know like nudge them or something? That's actually something that we're working on. We want to show you like a progress indicator or some kind of like movement indication. We don't have it now. This is our MVP, and we've tried to like uh, we've shot for compatibility, but that is something that we want to do and kind of show you their relative location to where you are and if they're moving. Yeah, sir. Oh sure, yes, absolutely. Uh, he wanted to see the website for the feedback. Yes. Yeah, so when you send an invitation, uh, you asked if there was a text message. Um, so this link is for, for sending us feedback, but when you send an invitation from within the app, the way that we, we send out your invitations, if you don't have the app already, we send you a, a text message. All of your invitees get text messages. And they get a link either to download the app or they get a link to open up that invitation in a mobile web browser and share their ETA and see the ETA board from there. Okay. Right? Well, thank you for that. All right, high school seniors with party panic. I appreciate that. I'm going to look into that. Thank you. And come talk to me afterward. I, want, I need to get some of those high schools down so I can follow up. <laughs> Any other questions? Sir? We are working on Android, uh, and you, ha you need iOS to create an event, but if you have Android, like I said, opening it up from the mobile browser, uh, you can still share your ETA, and you can see the ETA board. But we are working on Android. Sir? Question is, how do you know if you're driving a car or walking somewhere? Uh, as of now, you, we don't. Right? We assume that you're driving because we're using a Google API, uh, but again, we get traction, we get a lot of users, that is something we, that's on our roadmap. I'm a, I'm a product person. Everything is on the roadmap all the time. It's just where it is on the roadmap. <laughs> and I never tell anybody. <laughs> Other questions? I got two minutes and 30 seconds. Sir? So the, way, uh, the question is, is, do we have a website up which has the same functionality for Android users? So again, the way it works is when someone with an iOS app sends, creates an event and sends out the invitations, the invita that text message that is the invitation has a link to the mobile website specifically for that event. So I'm gonna have, we're all gonna, we're gonna have dinner, right? Me and you, we're going out for dinner. You have an Android phone, I have an uh, Android phone, I have an iPhone. I send you the alert, you get a text message, you can't download the app because you have Android. But when you click on the mobile browser, the exact screen that looks like the ETA board comes up and you'll see this on your mobile browser. It'll ask for your, to share your location and, or to uh, share your GPS and then we'll calculate your ETA and you'll see it just like I do. That's right, until we come out with an Android version. That's right, yeah. Other, sir? Why do we call it party panic? Alliteration. <laughs> I Why, I'm sorry. When you can see someone in party panic? Oh, why did we call it party panic? So party panic is the symptom, the thing that we don't want you to have. Uh, and it sucks. <laughs> oh, call the app Party Panic. Oh, oh, I see, I see, I see. Well, uh, you know. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Add that to the survey when you fill it out. Other questions? I got 50 seconds. This is your chance. Why do I need an app? Why do I need an app? Hmm. I think it's because we wanted to go with a native experience. Uh, we, I like, we, we wanted to develop a real app, something that was more, uh, you know, kind of like familiar for an iOS device. But I think if we see a lot of people telling us like, hey, I would rather just go to a website and create it from there, we might, we might switch it to come purely online experience. It's, how long have you been in the business? How long have we been in the business? Uh, nine months? We put out, we pitched at Switchyards back in, um, in August, and we've been kind of like tinkering around with different ideas and trying to improve since then. Uh, I have a paycheck, and that goes into it, so that's about it. <laughs> I have not raised money. That was a question. I'm sorry, Ali, I'm letting you down. I'm, oh, look at that. Thank you all very much.
Feedback. Download the app. Thank you. Awesome. I know you were super close to like having the 100%. Um, nobody ever remembers to repeat the question. So I have also been asked to give a PSA by the ATV staff that if you were in the back, we can hear you talking and it makes us sad. Um, so please take it out into the lobby um, if you have something super important to talk about. Um, okay, so the fantastic thing is here in between all the chairs that you're sitting on are set up by our amazing team of volunteers who get a little 30 second pitch in between in return for setting them taking down the chairs and all of their information will be in the back on that white wall. So if you hear something you want to hear more about later, come back and chat with them and Dante, here you go. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. My name is Dante Atkinson. I'm from an organization called GFOA, which stands for Georgia Football Officials Association. I'm a scrum master and also a certified product owner. But what I do in my spare time is get rid of these love handles by getting out on the football field. By show of hands, how many of you love the great game of football? Well, I would like to invite you, male and female, to join our organization, which dates way back to 1929. Some of the mechanics you see today in the SEC and the NCAA was originated by our founder, Mr. George C. Garner. So I'll be in the back for questions we're looking for male, female, must be of the age of 18 and physically fit. I don't want you to buy this, I want you to earn this. So see me afterwards and we'll talk about it. Thanks everyone, have a good night. All right, our second presenter tonight, Make Music Count. Give him a warm welcome. More, more applause, more applause. Good evening, everyone. My name is Marcus Blackwell, and I'm the CEO and founder of Make Music Count, which is a math curriculum taught by learning how to play the piano. I started playing the piano at the age of five and got really, really good, but what I wasn't good at was math because my teachers told me that math was hard and I believed them. And so that math phobia stuck with me through elementary, middle, and high school. And that's really what we're here to solve is to eliminate the math phobia in third through ninth grade students by teaching them how to play the piano. It wasn't until I went to a college and majored in math and then became an engineer that I proved to myself that math would no longer defeat me. But the one thing that made the difference was that if I, I realized that if I'm this good at playing the piano, that must also mean that I'm good at math. So let's assume that everybody here likes music, right? Yes. I'm going to prove to you that that means that you are also excellent at mathematics. Now, the way we're gonna do that, we're going to take a trip into the classroom. Now, before I play this, the way this works, think of the piano as a number line, and we're going to be counting the movements between notes on the piano, all right? So let's take a look. So, we're engaging because we pick songs that kids actually care about. This lesson is learning how to play Humble by Kendrick Lamar, focusing on how to apply your understanding of adding and subtracting fractions. So your equations are listed and you answer by pushing the notes on the piano. Now it's moving really fast, but if you can just look, when you add, you move to the right, when you subtract, you move to the left. And when you finish, your answers are the notes to play the actual melody of the song. All right, so that's an example of one lesson understanding how to add and subtract fractions. Now that is the foundation. We also take this further so that students can apply their understanding of foundational algebra, like solving for x, substituting variables, um, order of operations, graphing, and also calculus. Now remember, all of your answers are musical notes so that you can play either melodies like you saw or you can play chords. And so now the good thing is that you don't need to know anything about playing the piano beforehand your math will teach you how to play the piano. That's the point. Now, the reason why we made this is because um, we're all about just engaging our students in a different way, meeting them where they are. And so now, as an online application, we'll be able to offer content 
to schools that are now moving towards one-to-one -one learning um, to allow students to have neat ways to be engaged during the school day. And we're also going to allow students to do this outside of the classroom as well. Now here are the things that we are looking for right now. This app is currently available in the App Store for Android products and iPads. It is completely free. There are 10 songs that you can download. Um, Kendrick Lamar is one. We've got some 2 Chains, Migos. we got some Justin Timberlake, all the hot stuff, right? So, um, so first, download it. Second, if you are an educational platform, we want to work with you. One thing that we're going to be able to do is provide um, help with neat new math content, right? Now, secondly, if you are connected to a school, school districts, we want to do the same thing. We want to provide engagement during the school day um, so that we can get these kids' grades up. So if we can capture them while they're young, we'll be able to push more kids towards STEM fields in college and see more things like scientists and all that good stuff, right? Um, last thing, we are seeking uh, seed capital for $200,000 that will allow us to continue to develop this, so have the complete curriculum so that it can be licensed to school districts and have subscription available. Also, um, to provide marketing for online. Uh, we're gonna be marketing on social media, like Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. And lastly, to build a team around our product. Currently, it's just me, myself, and I, and we need help growing the team. So um, that's where I'll leave it for now. I'd love to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so what does success look like? Um, first, um, the app is going to capture your math understanding. So what the video didn't show was that at the end of your lesson, there's a math quiz that's based on the same math that you use in the music lesson. So we're going to be capturing your understanding. So as you finish the, math, the music lesson, your understanding of math goes up, and we'll be able to show you that. Success also looks like um, having fun while doing math. It's really just that simple, right? So, yes. The question is, have I looked at it as a platform to play the piano? The answer is yes and no. Um, yes, because you learn how to play the piano by default, right, from doing this, you are learning the piano. No, because we are not using music theory to teach the piano. And as a pianist, um, I don't want to do that, or say that we're doing that, if that makes sense. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so the question was, there's a quiz at the end, is there a correlation between how well they do on the quiz versus how well they do? Yeah, we hope so. That's, that's what we're after. We're, we're looking to capture that experience. If you can do this to play the piano, then that means you can just do it. But you have to do it with just only math, right? We're not trying to replace a math classroom, we're trying to be a supplement for it. Other questions? Yes. So the question was, have I aligned this with how math is taught in the classroom? Yes, so on our website, makemusiccount.com, you can see all the common core um, standards that we align this with. Um, the point is to be able to go back to the classroom and do the same exact math that we want them to do, right? So uh, we're not changing anything except for that they're musical notes instead of numbers. Any other, yes sir? Uh, 60? Oh, the question was, how many users do we have currently? 60, but after tonight, we'll have so much more. Thank you. Yes. Yes, yes sir. The question was, is there a way to practice the math without the music? Um, yes, in the quiz. <laughs> Yes. 
so you're uh so the question was furthering on the impact of the math so yes so the math quizzes um, have more of an impact uh, with the user they're worth more points and that's going to have more of a of our understanding on whether or not you're you're catching the math piece better than the music piece so we have to remember the piano is the reward for for the math right so we're not really capturing what the piano means when you play along except for when you answer it in a math question yes yeah, the question is how we do with copyrights, um, the musicians, right? So I'm a member of ASCAP and I have a blanket license for the entire library that I pay annually. So it's cheap. So the question is, can the instructor input uh, less lessons that they want to teach the students to learn? Oh, the problems. Um, no, what the teachers can do is select which subject they want their kids to focus on. I'm the one that creates the equations. That's my IP. Yes. The question is, have I considered adding other types of music? Yes, of course. Um, it's not just hip hop, even though it's awesome. There's lots of other great music that we use. As a musician, um, I play everything, so there's more to the question? Oh, other instruments, yes. So this will be the last question. So this method can absolutely apply to other instruments. The difference is you would already have to know how to play the notes on other instruments. The piano already has it laid out for you, so that's why I use the piano. Thank you, guys. Great job. All right. My volunteer in between this time around is Chris. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> Glad you're here. Um, I'm Chris Gamble, founder of a company called Beacon. And we look at a room full of people as a room full of connection potential waiting to be discovered. And so likely you came here hoping to make some connections or meet somebody. Um, and currently how that happens is kind of random and haphazard. And so we're building a solution that helps you discover the most relevant connections in the room. Um, so if you organize a meetup, a conference, um, or any kind of networking event, contact me and I'll be in the back and I'd love to uh, for free, help your attendees make the right connections. Thanks. All right, awesome. Our third presenter, Groupie. Hi, everyone. Hey. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joni, and I'm the founder of Groupie. Um, have you ever wanted to do something, but you didn't want to do it alone? Or how many times have you, your friends flaked on you? Or how many times have you gone in Groupon and they have an awesome deal for four people, but you don't have four friends because your friends kind of suck? Um, there's an app for that. <laughs> it's called Groupie. It's a mobile app for on-demand group activity. Um, so it's instant. It's on-demand. You can create the size of your Groupie a minimum of two or a maximum of ten. The problem is social media actually makes you less social. Um, a study of 5,000 people found that for every like status update, your emotional health declines from 5 to 8%. Have you ever looked and like, oh my god, their, their life is so awesome? It's, it's actually really not. Your life is awesome. You just have to step into the front row of your life. So with Groupie, what do we do? Groupie gives you things to do and people to do them with. Like I stated before, Groupon, it gives you discounted things, but it does not give you people to do, do them with. Millennials want to engage with other people on things that they like to do. Groupie, groupie aggregates that demand in a platform. Oh, watch the fix. Watch this video, please.
So you can create a groupie for anything, whether it's indoor skydiving, free yoga in the park, uh, Star Wars conventions, we've actually had that. So now we want some audience participation and we want you to create a groupie. So does anyone want to create a groupie? Any hands? Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you want to see, we're going to just take a photo of the, take a picture of the crowd. Because he wants to say, hey, guys. All right, we're going to use that photo. And we're going to go to Atlanta, Georgia. You can... Okay, we could do that. That's pretty cool. All right, so with grouping, you can pick the size of your group, a minimum of two to make sure that you're always in a group of three and a maximum of 10. You can choose the gender and the age range, eight to 100, 18 to 100. You choose the date and the time. You choose the price. You add a little cute little title. You don't have to put Avengers, the long title, but yeah. <laughs> Type pastor, a test with crowd. <laughs> you choose the categories you have arts, entertainment, fashion, food and drink, outdoors, recreational, social impact, or theater, the skill level. Save it. Hey guys, save it. And you had just created a groupie. It's easy peasy. These are groupies that people have created. You can use the geofencing to see what groupies are around you. And you can delete a groupie. We use in-app messaging so you can contact groupies. And we want to make sure that you're always safe. If you get a weirdo rando that's like a really weird person, you can block them. And you don't ever have to see another groupie from them ever again. And you can message them to find out more about the groupie. You can say, oh, see, she's saying hello. Hey, guys. And um, that's groupie. So go explore, go connect, go groupie. You can go on. Oh, we'll be available June of 2018 this year on Android and iOS, www.groupie.com to uh, sign up and register. <laughs> So I'll take some questions. I saw you right there. Thank you. It, it is. So you do. he said he loves the app. It's a really good idea. And is it paid at all? It actually is. We have uh, three tiers. The first tier is our users. So those are user creator groupies, and that's a minimum from 2 to 10. And then we have the premium version. If a user wants to create more than 10, they can pay for that. And then we also have the top tier. If, I, if you did notice, I did say something about Groupon. Merchants can onboard and do groupie-sponsored events for a discounted price for people, whether that's aggregating their slow hour or their slow day they can onboard and use Groovy for that. You can. Oh, her, this young lady in the front asked, can you see people's profiles? You actually can see their profiles. You can see how many experiences they've had, and they add a little cute quote and what city they're from. Uh, I'll take you over there in the corner. Oh, this will be Sean, my CCO, who will answer that question. So the question was, what happens if someone sees you, that you're going to a groupie and shows up at the groupie but not use the system? We are working on two security measures to counteract that. One of them is a live panic button that will give us an alert immediately if there's a challenge, and we, we will kind of deal with that immediately. Guy in the back? You. you. Ooh, I love that. Oh, so the question was, have we raised money? Actually, I was the Google for Entrepreneur, Google for Entrepreneurs, Entrepreneur and Residents. I did receive grant money with them. I did a friends and family round, and I'm currently entering to my Series A. But we will be talking to you later. Okay, sorry. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, <laughs> right there. So the price option is just to give you an idea of what it will cost when you get there. In the second iteration of the app, we will be able to accept payments through the app as well. Okay, if a person creates a groupie, who does the money go to? The money goes to the establishment. We're onboarding merchants right now. Uh, yes, in the back. How do we di differentiate ourselves between something like Meetup? That is a great question. Groupie is different from Meetup because we provide three things. The on-demand instant aspect. We provide both sides of the business transaction where we provide things to do and people to do them with at a discounted rate. And also, we get, a, get rid of RSVP remorse. RSVP remorse is when you sign up for something and later you don't want to do it. Meetup is great, but you have to wait for people to create events that you want to go to. Groupie allows you to cre curate your own events in the platform, and it gives the, the user control as well on both ends to join and to create. Yeah, like a house party. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. How do I establish trust? I can't. So the way you establish trust as a groupie user is that you start following people who create groupies that you like. So that yeah, that allows you to have trust. I'm sorry. Let's pick up the mic. So the question was, how do you establish trust when you have groupies? And basically, you can follow the groupies that you like. So if someone's creating awesome groupies, you can be a part of that experience. And of course, if there's any issue, you can contact us through the app or contact the organizer of the groupie directly. That is a great question. Can you rate the groupies, the users, or the previous event? In the next iter or both. In the next iteration, you will be able to. We did just talk about that earlier about rating users. So yes, not now, but you will eventually be able to do so. Any other questions? Yes, sir. How do I plan on that? Oh, I'm out of time. You can answer it. <laughs> Go ahead and answer that one. <laughs> okay, so we plan to mass market groupies um, one of two ways. Our go-to-market strategy is doing groupie-sponsored events. So you'll see groupie-sponsored events uh, around the city. Like we're going to do one at Piedmont Park, 500 people, groupie in the park, um, with Frisbee and things like that. We're also going to use partnerships to scale, if that makes sense. But I can't tell you more about that because I didn't sign yet. So, yeah. All right. All right. Round of applause. Thanks, guys. I was going to say, all right, our volunteer is Supporter. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Inman Porter. I'm the founder and CEO of Supporter. We are headquartered right here in the Atlanta Tech Village, and we are launching an ICO to increase transparency in the nonprofit sector, as well as decrease processing fees, and ultimately help these organizations raise more money. You've all heard these horror stories about only maybe 3% of a donation actually goes to the cause it was intended for. That would never happen on our platform. We did just launch our pre-sale in LA last week, and we are, active, are actively seeking both accredited and non-accredited investors. We believe Supporter offers a rare opportunity to invest in blockchain technology while making the world a better place. So check us out at www.supporterinc.io, or find me or one of my brothers in a Supporter shirt after this event. Thank you very much. All right. Fourth presenter tonight, Lockbox Local. Thank you. How's everyone doing tonight? Good? It is so good to be here at Atlanta Tech Village Startup Village. Thank you. I'm Robert Kelly, founder of Lockbox Local. Has anyone heard of Lockbox Local that I didn't talk to tonight? <laughs> well, about six years ago, my wife and I met an elderly couple, Art and Jean, and a little over a year ago, we helped transition them into assisted living. And as part of that transition process, we had to sell some things they couldn't take with them. So we used an app. And selling with that app, the exchange went something like this. 
You Tim? You Julian? You got the stuff? You got the money? Of course I got the money. Who's this? Don't worry about him. Yeah, don't worry about me. I thought I told you to come alone. This isn't my first rodeo, pal. No one ever comes alone. Fair enough. Whoa, 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 whoa. Relax. We're cool, right? We're cool. Yeah. Yeah, we're cool. Show me the iPad. Can you do 200? It's not negotiable. In the post, I said 250. Okay, okay, no worries. Show me the cash. I'm gonna reach in my pocket. Where's the money? Slowly. Let go. On three. One, two, three. So who buys and sells things with apps, social media, Craigslist? Who can relate to the video? Yeah. Connecting sellers and buyers today in the secondhand marketplace easier than ever. The problem is completing those transactions causes huge anxiety for sellers and buyers alike. And for good reason. There's over 100 murders connected to Craigslist, not to mention rapes and robberies. It does not have to be this way. There is a better way to implement the social contract. For sellers and buyers to have some assurance the other is not the next Craigslist killer. To establish trust. Trust is the idea behind Lockbox Local, a secure deposit payment app with mutual funds release. It's a better way to take and make payments when you have to meet to make the exchange. How is it safer? Our users are registered with their name, phone number, address, and bank account. So everybody knows they're dealing with a real traceable person. Now, there are escrow payment apps. They are not for small to mid-dollar transactions. Lockbox Local charges less than 2% to the seller and the buyer. With the other services, you could pay as much as 75%. Yeah. Our app is easy to use. After a simple registration process, you're ready to go. As a buyer, you're going to contact the seller as you normally would. After agreeing to the price, the buyer selects the seller from the list of users and initiates a transaction depositing money into Lockbox Local. The seller sees that deposit. They mutually hold the key to completing that transaction. The seller and the buyer meet. The buyer inspects the item. They each click Approve, and the money's transferred to the seller. No cash required. And if the transaction's not completed before the expiration time, the money's automatically immediately returned to the buyer. Lockbox Local offers a never-before-had convenience to our customers with secure deposit payments and mutual funds release. Sellers, qualify your buyers. Buyers. Show you're serious. It's a safer, anxiety-free transaction experience for all. Now, we launched in the App Store in February, and we need beta users. So please, download the Lockbox Local app today and tell us what you think. Thank you. Yes. Any cryptocurrency integrations? I've had that question before. I'm a product guy, it's on the roadmap. <laughs> yes. So how do I prevent people from uh, abusing this? So there, there's still a buyer beware aspect to this. The idea is that because our users are registered, it's less likely something bad's gonna happen. Yes, sir. Where am I with raising capital? Nowhere. <laughs> uh, our MVP is in the App Store. So we're, we're trying to get traction right now. This isn't about 
raising money yet. Yes. All right, when you sell, can you withdraw your money? So, and is there buyer protection? So, uh, buyer protection uh, or an insurance, if you will, uh, again, potentially a, a feature that could be added. Uh, what we're doing is we use Plaid and Stripe to facilitate the transaction. So, this is an ACH transfer from the buyer to Lockbox Local and then from Lockbox Local to the seller. So, there really isn't a, a re, uh, getting your money back back, or you don't have to download your money or anything like that, like you would with Venmo. It's, it's automatically transferred. Every, as, as a registered user, you have a Plaid and a Stripe account. Yes? How is this different from PayPal? So with uh, PayPal, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Venmo, et cetera, et cetera, with those services, when you click send money, you are transferring the money to the other person. And uh, so essentially, as a, as a seller, you'd be saying, hey, send me money before you come pick up the item, which as a buyer, I wouldn't want to do. And it, why wouldn't PayPal? Oh, I, I, I would love PayPal to come talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, so what happens if the buyer takes the item and it doesn't release the fund? So, again, you're dealing with a face-to-face -face transaction. So the buyer and the seller are together. So everybody click approve, right? The seller sees that. You can walk away now. Do I have any intellectual property? The app itself. <laughs> yes. Uh, there, there is no minimum. Uh, what is the minimum amount of the transaction? Uh, there is no minimum transaction amount. I have an ideal transaction amount, something above $25, and a maximum of I don't. Have for two dollars, how do I make money? I don't. <laughs> I'm looking for users. <laughs> yes, sir. S specifically escrow.com. If you if you uh, their minimum transaction is two hundred dollars, Who, who's charging seventy five percent? Escrow.com, their minimum transaction is two hundred dollars, and that, that transaction will cost you uh, 150. Yes, sir. So if I scale this and I have hundreds of thousands of users, am I solving the, the, the murder problem associated with selling on, with app social media and Craigslist? Uh, I think the answer to that is yes. But again, because we're, we're, we had a, it's a registered user pool. So somebody does something bad. I mean, no, obviously if they kill you, then, you know, you can't report them to the police. But... <laughs> Yes. Is is there anybody monitoring the the type of transaction that's occurring? No. In, in theory, you can sell anything you want with it. Obviously, I don't want you to sell certain things, but it's <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. All right, my last volunteer for tonight, John with Greater Atlanta Internet of Things. There you are, John. 
Hi, everyone. Can you hear me all right? Uh, so I'm in a meetup called the Greater Atlanta Internet of Things, and I wanted to uh, talk to you about our IoT showcase coming up on May 15th. Uh, that's in two weeks. So the ask for that is to come and see. We had 275 people come last year to our IoT showcase, so we think there'll be a lot of other people there. Also, if you want to come and show, uh, we do have tables available for you to set up if you have an IoT product or solution. And then we also would ask to come and sponsor. Uh, if you want to sponsor us, uh, we have opportunities for that as well. So why do people come to a meetup? Because they don't believe the hype. They want to talk to real people. They don't want to look on the internet. They want to look at things up close. Um, and uh, what was the third one, sorry? It's at the Atlanta Tech Park, uh, just outside the perimeter. Thank you. All right, and our last presenters of the night, Tube In. Right now, we're actually live streaming. And I want everybody to think about this for just a quick moment. Why are we live streaming? If you're like me, that's to engage the outside viewers here that cannot be here to actually participate in this event in real time. So if we were to take that one step further, what is it that we could do to engage them, to bring them into this event and actually make them a part of our stream right now? So for example, if they actually had a question, how could they ask that question? Secondly, if we wanted to monetize our live stream, what are some things that we could do to actually make that happen? How can we bring together people that are interested in advertising on our actual live stream, and then vice versa, how can the live streamers actually find those people that they want to stream to? And then thirdly, how can we make this easy to use for anybody that wants to produce a live stream and then take it one step further so that they can produce a 24 seven live stream channel? So what I have now, introducing Tubin Live Studio. My name is Joel Silverman, and I am the CEO of Tubin. Yeah, this is Tubin Live Studio. It's a cloud-based solution for live video production. What you see in the main section of this video, we can transcode that in Amazon Jungle and send it for you to uh, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, or any custom RTMP or uh, video solution of front-end that you would like to have. You can see here that we have set up different cameras. So I have two cameras. I can easily switch between the cameras. So now you guys can see yourself, say hi to the camera. I guess that's the camera you're seeing now. Yeah, this is, you can also have different audio sources. It would be the same. And then if you are having a live event, most probably you would like to have some uh, pre-recorded assets into your video, like video and images. You can easily inject those, play with them in our custom control, and then inject that in detail. your show. And if we can bankroll him $100,000 in startup money, he'll triple our investment in a year. Well, uh, gee, I, I, I don't... Uh... Peter, I've taken the liberty of mocking up some sales projections. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. And this would be our net profits. Yikes. Yeah, this, I like Family Guys. Um, so uh, what, you will, what you just saw is an uploaded file. We also have the preview sections, uh, which I guess uh, it's now gone. You probably you guys can uh, come again. So anyone who wants to participate in the show can easily use our tubing app, and we will send the feed of that mobile into the preview tab. And we can easily inject those into the main video section that you have here. Oops. Yeah, now I have Sadaf also uh, joining us here. So you can see that Sadaf joining us with the tubing app. And now I can have Sadaf also. Oops, he's gone again. Morph is out, demo problem. Yeah, and uh, once we have that, we can easily play with the layouts also. Like we have the layout panels here that you can easily play with. We have another participant coming. I can I see if I can inject. No, the injection part is not working now. We, we, we do the injection for Q&A. And then 
Regarding the uh, problem of engagement, we have comments and chats, like the ordinary things that people do when live streaming. But we have one more specific things that we push the notch of engagement one level up, and that's what we call tubing. So any participant that wants to join the live stream, they can easily tube in to the event or the live stream. You can check if they're willing to pay or if they are the locations that they are in. You can accept them, preview them, and then inject them into the same live stream that you are having the show with. So it's like, really, it's like CNN, like the layouts, the banners that we have. It's like we, this, we put a lot of time into designing that and make sure that it's a pro-level quality. And finally, I want to say that uh, we have an AI engine for the ad also. So regarding the monetization problem, once we talk with the content creators, we find out that they care a lot about monetizing their uh, content. And we think about that differently because what's lacking on YouTube on different platform is that they don't have the peer-to-peer -peer network for monetization. We bring the transparency here. You see which company willing to pay you how much and then you can inject the ad into the live stream itself. And finally, I, I just can't uh, not mention that this is a timeline. Like this is a component that you can have pin like pre-recorded contents and like all the videos that you want to show up in your con, you can just design it on the timeline like a 24 seven TV and just broadcast it to wherever you want. With that, I. Go ahead. Yeah, I try to restart too. Yeah, yeah. All right. So thank you. What we're going to do now um, is we're going to open it up for uh, question and answers. And we're, we're Tubin. This is uh, Sala, Joel, Camille, and... Uh, go ahead. Is it subscription-based? Subscription um, right now our model is that we can have anybody come onto this platform and really where we're making the money is from uh, the advertisements and then the people that want to join and interject their own video into it. That's kind of like the main revenue streams. And then for folks that want to run like a larger channel, if they want to go 24 seven and become their own media mogul, then absolutely they, they, there is a, uh, a revenue stream for that as well. I got question all the way in the back there, waving his hand. Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What's the difference between what and what Sling offers? Um, that you're able to montage this like immediately and then you can have people that actually come into the video itself and they can pay for that. And then also you have complete control over who you advertise with. So if Sling, for example, you were, you were advertising on that and it was your product, if you have a competitor that wants to advertise on that, you can reject it. So you get to pick which types of advertisements you want to display. I think we had a question over here. Add something on that. Sorry uh, for your question. As you said, uh, this is a web-based and based on browser, and it kind of uh, we don't need any hardware to do live streaming. Just one laptop, whatever. Okay, that's it. And so it decreased the cost for streaming at least by 110 percent for all streamers. Go ahead, please. Where do you find us? Uh, Tubin.com is probably the best place. We're doing a soft launch this summer, and we have a lot of folks that want to actually join the platform, so we're looking for key players in that. Uh, of course, we're also looking for investors. I think we had a question. Yes. It's both of them. Oh, sorry. So, So the, the question kind of revolves around the platform itself and how we're actually pulling in the different video streams, I believe. Is that correct? Uh, actually, it's the delivery. The delivery. The delivery. Uh, so this pulls in all the, all the information, and then the delivery is back out to whoever you need it to. So for Facebook Live, Tube, uh, YouTube Live, or, or uh, Twitch is which the big one is that's out there. So at Correct. this point, no. At this point, we don't have our own CDN, no. So we are using YouTube at this point, or Facebook, like what? <coughs> it's, at this point, it's a production platform, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, how big is the company, and which employee wrote the fake comments? Who wrote the fake comments? All right, so uh, the company is the three of us, okay? 
So um, as far as the comments, we just mocked up some things uh, right now. So this stream that you're seeing right now is not the stream that's actually going out there uh, for this particular event. It's just internal for, for this. Yeah, we are not archiving too, so it's just live streaming for that. Thing. Uh, we do have geotargeting. You'll notice up at the top, it actually figures out like where you're located, and then it will actually display that. Repeat and the so, repeat the question. oh, the question was, can we geotarget? Uh, I apologize. So, prior to actually uh, injecting them into the stream itself, you have full control as to who you want to display. So you have the preview, so that if they're not the right type of person that you want in there. Also, it does GeoStream where it, it will give you the tag information based on where they're located. Uh, we had... Correct, absolutely. Yes, we have a preview section for that. So he's give you a possibility to preview the content me. before. The question was about uh, reviewing who you're actually going to inject back into your stream. So, Thank you all. We do have it. Please see our site, website. Thank you. All right. If you have additional questions, you can find all of our presenters up here after the event. Um, thank you all for coming out tonight. Catch the volunteers in the back, presenters up here, and grab another beer for about the next 15 minutes.